Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Functional Beauty with Alicia Larie. If you don't already know, I'm Alicia and I'm a blogger over at alicialarie.com. I do all kinds of home decor, home organization over there. I'm also a mother to uh, three kids, three dogs, and a whole lot of plants. So if you like content like home decor, home organization, and cleaning motivation, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and stick around. You can also go follow me on Instagram at Alicia Larie. I'm trying to build my community over there as well. Today we have a really fun project. We're going to be making a chunky hand knit blanket. These are so popular right now and I've wanted to make one for a really long time. I'm obsessed with blankets and have them all over my house so I'm really excited about this. I wanted to have a really soft, the big chunky yarn type blanket so I used the Bernay Blanket Big Yarn in 10 and a half ounces you need probably like six or seven i actually use seven skeins and then um, some scissors and a measuring tape so let's get started so i'm by no means a professional at crafting or making anything i'm actually not that great at it so this is for people who are like me and you know you don't need all of the actual details you can kind of watch what i do but i took inspiration from another youtube video which i will link in the description but you want to start off with a slip knot i don't think this is actually a slip knot but you want to start out with a slip knot that's about one and a half to two inches and then you're going to start your first row of chains and you want to make sure that the chains are about the same size i really struggled with this and my perfectionism kicked in and i redid this I did this chain and redid it in a million times. I actually redid this blanket like a million times, but the good thing about this project is that it doesn't take very long, so you can kind of redo it as many times as you want and it's not going to take you forever. Um, so I first started with a chain that was about four feet, but I noticed that the more rows that I put on the wider it got and that's just probably because my chains weren't all the same size all the way through and it's so difficult to get them the same size I mean you can try your best but obviously human you know we make errors so um I just ended up making mine like I said I took it apart a million times I ended up making mine a little smaller than four feet and by the time I got some rows on and it kind of stretched out it's almost four feet it's not quite but it's almost four feet in length so just keep that in mind when you're making your blanket don't get frustrated with it because I did and that's not the point of this it's point is to have fun and to just make it and not worry about it so uh, that's my biggest tip is just to uh, go for it and uh, don't worry too much about it being perfect when it was all said and done and i finally uh, figured out my chain i ended up with uh, 26 chains so uh, this second row you want to pull your yarn up through each individual chain so since i had 26 i should pull up 26 loops on this second row. So you would just want to make sure that how many of our chains you started with, you have the same amount in your second row and then each row following that. So it's pretty simple um, once you kind of get going. After this second row and you start on your third row, it gets starts getting a little bit easier, but you do want to make sure that you pull those loops up and make them this try to make them the same size so you when you get to the end you want to make sure you also pull a loop up through by where your knot is where you started and that one's kind of easy to miss so make sure you do that and then before you move on to your third row just make sure you count your loops and uh, like i'm doing here and make sure that you have the same number as you did on your first chain So fast, baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe And right away I so much time looping in the blurry lights Get in my way now, don't be shy We'll be here dancing day and night Get in my groove now, don't be shy Cause I got the system, my favorite thing 
So now we're on to the third row and same exact thing. You just want to pull loops up through all of the loops in the second row to make your third row. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again. So like I said, it's really, really easy to do once you establish how long you want your first chain. And I think that's what I struggled with the most is just trying to figure out how to get it to be about four feet wide. And um, ultimately I just tried my best <laughs> and that's all you can do. I wanted to use as little amount of yarn skeins as I possibly could. And I ended up using seven, which is not too bad. I really wanted to use six, but I wanted to make it a little bit longer. So I used a seventh one, but um, all in all, this is a really simple project. You just have to try your best and not get frustrated with it. Get in my way now, don't be shy. We'll be here dancing day and night. Get in my groove now, don't be shy. You could be one of the things I love. Sunday morning breakfast with my bedroom door locked. Feel like everything that is a jury on top. Get on my list of the things I love, love, love. You could be the one I trust. All those second chances they are nothing for us. So I definitely think this is easiest to do on a table. You can just roll your blanket as you go and it makes it a lot easier just to lay it all flat. And then this is me tying on another ball of yarn. You just want to tie it real tight and then cut off the ends. And it's going to be a bigger knot than the yarn, but don't worry about it. It just kind of gets lost in the blanket so you won't really see them. You just want to make sure that they're really tight and they're not going to come apart.
so here we are on our last row of stitches you uh, want to make your loops a little bit bigger so that you can feed them through each other to finish off your blanket so make them about double the size that you have been making them all the way across and then we will get to the part where we can finish off the blanket So now you want to take each of those loops and feed them through each other. You want to take the second loop and feed it through the first one. So I always had to tell myself to push the second one through the first one. Um, you can see here I kind of had it backwards. So just make sure that you're putting that second loop through the first one each time and go all the way down your blanket. And it makes a nice little finished chain. So here we are at the end of our blanket. I am just going to take the tail end of my yarn, stick it through this last stitch and secure it with a knot. You can either do this and weave that tail back down into your blanket or you can use needle and thread to secure it. So this is the finished blanket you guys. I absolutely love it. I'm so glad that I did this project even though it was a little frustrating at first. I think the trick is giving yourself a little grace and knowing that even though there's spots that you might not think are perfect, it honestly just gets lost because the yarn is so big and chunky. So this was such a fun project. I am obsessed with this blanket. It's so soft and I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Remember, if you ever want to follow me on any social media platform, it's always at Alicia Lurie. Bye, guys.